Praise the Lord. Steve Porter here. Just wanted to take a few minutes to encourage you in the Lord. I was over on Facebook and I did a short Facebook live video and I just wanted to also do it on Periscope. The Lord dropped a word in my heart for you and I'm just trusting that this word is going to encourage someone in the Lord. You know, sometimes we just need a little bit of encouragement. We need someone to come along and remind us of things that we already know. I'm not going to give you some deep revelation today. I'm not going to do a lot of teaching. I just want to just bring a, a little encouragement to your heart. And I'm trusting that this word would inspire you today. So before we go any further, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for my friend that is watching on Periscope and those that will watch via Twitter. I ask you, Lord, that you would just encourage them even now, that your presence would come and touch them. I ask you, Lord, that we would just not have another uh, video, Father, another live video, but this, there would be a touch from heaven on this broadcast, Lord, that you would come and have your way, that you'd bring it an anointing, that you'd bring a presence, Father, that would touch, that would heal, that would restore, that would deliver, that would anoint. I pray for a fresh anointing. I pray for a fresh touch, fresh oil. I thank you, Father, for just a fresh move of the Spirit in my friend's life that's watching. I ask you, Lord, that you would encourage them in the Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. I want to encourage you today by this word. The word is that God is a faithful father. That God is a faithful father. I want you to think back in your life of all the times that God has been faithful to you. I mean, think about it for a minute. Just think about it for a second. All of the many times that God has been faithful to you. You were down and out, and Father was faithful. He came through. You had an issue with finances. You didn't know how you were going to pay your bills. You didn't know how you were going to pay your rent. You had a bill that was due. You had a loan that was due. You didn't know how you were going to meet that need, and Father was faithful. You were sick in your body, you knew that if less God intervened, that it was going to get bad. The doctors didn't give you a good report. But in the end, he was Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you. And he was faithful. Oh, what about that relationship? That relationship that was strained and, and you cried out to God in the midnight hour. and You began to ask the Lord to come and to intervene. And then the Lord came in with spirit and might. And he was faithful to you. Think about that son or that daughter that you have and you saw that they were hurting or you saw that they were sick and you begin to cry out to the Lord, Lord, help my son and help my daughter. And to the rescue, Father God came and he was faithful. There's been so many stones of remembrance where you can sit there and you can ponder and you can think about the faithfulness of God. You can think about all of the many times the Father came through. Sometimes it felt like he was coming through in the last, last minute, but he came through for you. Father was faithful to you. This is the God that we serve. He is a faithful, faithful God. Now, the enemy, the devil, he'll try to come to you and say, oh, I, I know that Father has been faithful to you before, but, you know, maybe he... He might not be faithful to you this time. And he tries to bring doubt to you so that you begin to you begin to think about these things and you begin to ponder these things and you begin to allow the emotions that you're experiencing to dictate how you feel. And rather than have faith, you have fear. And so you begin to look at your situation and you begin to say, how in the world am I going to ever make it? And I want you to know that the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. He is a faithful God. And just like he was faithful to you in the past, he will be faithful to you in your hour of need. Maybe some of you are going through a financial situation as I speak. Maybe you're watching this broadcast and you have need of healing in your body. You have need to meet the healer, Jesus Christ. 
Maybe you're facing a situation where you know that unless the Lord intervenes, you are certainly going to sink. I want you to know that he is a faithful God. He is a faithful God. He will never leave you or forsake you. He is a faithful God. Abba Father is your daddy. He is your heavenly daddy. And if you have children, don't you know that you would be willing to do whatever it took in order to help your child, wouldn't you? You'd go to the ends of the earth to help your children because you love them. There's nothing that you wouldn't be willing to do. You would lay down your life for your child because you love them so much. Well, I want you to think about your heavenly father and how he is your daddy. And certainly he's not going to stand there and watch you sink. He's not going to stand there and watch you just sit there and struggle and not care and turn his back to you. He is going to involve himself. Father God is going to involve himself in your situation. He is a faithful God. I want you to say with me right now that he is a faithful God. The Lord hasn't left me, and he never will. The Lord has not forsaken me, and he never will. He is my deliverer. He is my Prince of Peace. Amen? Maybe you need peace that passes all understanding. Maybe you need to, to put on the full armor of God. Maybe you need the Lord to come and just give you that peace that passes all understanding. What I want you to know is that he is willing to not only give you peace, but he's willing to involve himself on your situation. He is running right now. He is running to your rescue. He is the God of rescue. He is the God of recovery. He is the God of not just enough, but more than enough. He is the God that cares about every aspect of your life, and he is your deliverer. He is your deliverer. He is your deliverer. He is your healer. He is your restorer. And so I want you to reach your hand right now, like even like the woman with the issue of bread, issue of blood, how she reached out and called out to Jesus. I want you to call out to Jesus and say, Jesus, you are faithful. You will never leave me. You'll never forsake me. You are more than enough. You're involving yourself in my situation. I know you care about me. I know that you desperately love me with a love that can't be compared with anything on this earth. You love me more than my parents love me. You love me more than I love my children. You love me so much, and I thank you for that love, and I refuse to sit there and listen to the lies of the devil and begin to feel sorry for myself and begin to think that I'm all alone. Beloved, you are not alone. Beloved, you are not standing there by yourself. You're not in an empty room. You're not sitting there having to feel the pain all by yourself, but Jesus is sitting there with you. He's reaching his hands even now, right for you. He's grabbing a hold of your hands. I remember once I was praying for, for about two weeks and I was fasting as well. And I was crying out to the Lord. I said, Jesus, I desperately need to hear from you. I was asking the Lord for a deep touch of his presence on my life and on our ministry. I knew that there's something more that I needed. I wanted there to be an anointing. I wanted there to be a presence. I wanted lives to be changed. So I was asking the Lord for this and I was fasting and I was praying. And one night I went to bed and I went to sleep and the enemy came in my room and he paralyzed me to my bed and he just, just froze me to my bed. And I cried out in my mind because I couldn't even speak. I muttered, I said, Jesus. And as I said, Jesus, Instantly, the enemy left my room and I was fine. And there was no fear. I, I had faith. I knew that the Lord was near. The Lord was faithful to me. The next night, the enemy ramped it up another notch. This time, I seen him with my physical eyes. He swarmed right at me and he screamed in my face. 
As he screamed in my face, I yelled out, Jesus. As I yelled out, Jesus, the enemy instantly left. This is the power that we have in God. The enemy will try to paralyze you with fear in your situations. He'll try to come and bring doubt. He'll try to come and bring all kinds of stuff that will cause you to get your eyes on the devil rather than the eyes on God and his miracle working power. And so I began to say to the Lord, Lord, I thank you that you're with me. I thank you that the enemy, he tried to come in and mess with me. He tried to scream in my face, but I thank you that you're with me. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. And beloved, I know you that you don't know me very well, but I will stand before the Lord for this testimony that I'm about to give you. I will stand before the Lord. Every word that I tell you, I share with integrity as before the Lord. The very next night after the enemy messed with me for two nights, I went to sleep and instantly the presence of the Lord filled my room and I was awake, although I could not open my eyes. There was such a power in my room. I knew that Jesus had walked in my room. I knew that he was there. The power of Jesus was so strong and so powerful that I couldn't move one ounce of my body. I just laid there, just laid there. And I heard bells begin to ring. I heard and I felt a wind began to blow against me. And step by step, Jesus himself personally, physically, walked toward me. I was aware of each step that Jesus took toward me. As he walked right up to me, he reached down his hand and he grabbed one of my hands and he began to just kind of rub it, just rubbed one of my hands as if he was comforting me, as if he was imparting something to me. And instantly the vision ended and I was looking around my room and I thought, what just happened here? Jesus was literally standing right in front of me just a couple of moments ago. As soon as I said that, instantly the wind began to blow. Jesus walked back into my room. I could not open my eyes. The power in the presence of God was too strong. I could not move. And again, I heard bells ringing. And I knew step by step that Jesus was walking toward me. As Jesus walked straight up to me, he stopped, he paused, and this time he took two of my hands. He took both of my hands. Jesus held my hands. I don't know if that does anything for you. But I'm telling you, there's nothing that can be compared with the sweet master, the sweet master holding your hands. As Jesus held my hands, he just comforted me. He didn't say anything to me. He just stood there. He just stood. And as he stood, I just took in his love and then he was gone. And then I looked around the room again. I said, Jesus was just standing in front of me once again. And I came out of that experience with the Lord and I was very moved. I wept many tears because the sweet master came and paid me a visit. He comforted me. I want you to know that though the enemy would try to come and mess with you in your life, Although the enemy will try to come and scream at you in your face and tell you that you're all alone and that the devil is the one that's going to have the victory and that the Lord doesn't care. Those are lies from the enemy, from the father of all lies. The devil is a liar. I want you to know that your high priest, that your high priest, Jesus, I heard bells ringing because there were bells ringing on his, on his robe because I believe that he was symbolizing that he was my high priest, that he was coming to me. The Lord also spoke to me 
And he said that I will not be outdone by the enemy. The enemy messed with me for two nights. He came in physically and messed with me. And the Lord said, I will not be outdone by the enemy. I will come and pay you a visit. I will comfort you and I will bring my love. As your high priest, I will come and I will bring you love and I will bring you peace. And I want you to know, although you may not physically have Jesus walk up to you, the Lord is approaching you even now. And he's reaching down and he's grabbing your hands and he's whispering in your ear, daughter, son, I am here and I am a faithful God. I will see you through even your darkest of hours. You do not have to fear. You do not have to be dismayed. You do not have to sit there and feel sorry for yourself. You do not have to have your eyes on the circumstance. The Lord says, put your eyes on me, my child. Don't take your eyes off of me. Keep your eyes on me and I will see you through. I will never leave you or forsake you. I am your high priest. I am here to bestow a blessing upon you. I am here to wrap my loving arms around you. I am here to collect your tears. I am here to touch your heart. Every place that you hurt, I will touch. I will heal. Every place that you hurt, I will heal. And I will turn your scars into stars. I will give you double for your trouble. I will reverse every curse. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I am your God too. I will not turn my back on you, says the Lord. I will not turn my back on you, says the Lord. I will not turn my back on you, says the Lord, for I love you with an everlasting love. I care for you. I desire you. And I am looking in your direction even now. So, beloved, I want to encourage you in the Lord. I can sense the very presence of the Lord in this broadcast today. I usually don't come on Periscope, but I felt that quickening. I was just on Facebook Live, and that's where I do most of our broadcasts. You can go to our website at findrefuge.tv. That's findrefuge.tv. TV. You also see it on my Periscope there. The, the link is listed. And you'll see a little icon on our website, the Facebook icon on the bottom of the page. It's all our social media icons. Click on that and you can join our Facebook group and then you'll see all of our broadcasts. But I was over there doing a Facebook broadcast and I was done and I was getting ready to go in my house and the Lord said to do one on Periscope. So I believe that this word and this presence that I'm feeling right now is for somebody that's watching and somebody that will watch. I'm trusting that this word encourages you. I'm trusting that you feel the faithfulness of God surrounding you. I'm trusting that the presence of the Lord, the very manifest presence of the Lord will wrap around you like a warm blanket, that you will know that it's well with your soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with your soul. Why? Because you got an Abba Daddy Father that's looking out for you. Because you got a Father that won't abandon you. That you have a Father. How does people in this world make it without Jesus? I would hate to even be alive if I didn't have Jesus as my Savior. He's my closest friend. I speak to him about everything. Wherever I go, I talk to Jesus. Whenever I have a situation happens, I run to Jesus. If, I, if I'm driving down the road and I can't find my way, I'm losing directions, my GPS is going crazy, I call out to Jesus. I call out to Jesus about everything, even the little things. I think the Lord likes that when we involve him in every aspect of our lives because we make him personal. I don't want to just worship Jesus on Sunday morning and Wednesday night. I want Jesus 24-7, don't you? So if you don't have Jesus into your heart and in your life, how can you even make it? I mean, life is tough enough. Why would you want to be alone? You can have Jesus as your personal Savior, and you can have Jesus as your Abba Father. You can have Jesus as your closest comforter. You can have Jesus. He is there. He loves you with an everlasting love. 
by inviting him into your life. And so I'm going to give an altar call right here and now because on Periscope, I find that a lot of people drop in that don't know the Lord. Sometimes we have to block people. You got to welcome them to the block party. I had to do that for a couple people that were cursing at us. Uh, that's one reason I don't go on, on uh, Periscope as much as sometimes all the vulgarity that comes across. But um, I felt led to do it today. And so we're going to do it. But I'm going to give an altar call right now. If you don't know Jesus as personal Savior, if you were to die right now, where would you spend eternity? I mean, think about it. Eternity is a long time. Eternity is like a dove coming down from heaven, picking up a grain of sand and flying all the way to Pluto and dropping off that grain of sand and then flying all the way to the earth and getting another grain of sand and flying all the way to Pluto and dropping it off. And when all the sand over all the earth is gone, the Atlantic Ocean, Pacific Ocean, Indian Ocean, Sahara Desert, all the Great Lakes, all the sand over all the earth is gone. Every last grain of sand is gone and is in one big heap on the planet of Pluto. That's one second in eternity. So my friend, you better know that you know that you know that you're ready to meet God. Because if you're wrong and I'm right, I have everything to gain. I will be with Jesus. But if you're wrong. You will think about these things the rest of eternity. The Lord doesn't want anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance and for all to come to God. He is a faithful God. If you confess your sin, 1 John 1, 9 says, he'll be faithful and just to forgive your sin and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believed in him would not perish but have everlasting life. He doesn't want anyone to perish. He wants you right now to accept him as Lord and Savior. You can have your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's a big book in heaven. And you can have your name written in that book in heaven so when you die and that book is opened, your name is there and you enter the streets of glory. Billy Graham just passed away yesterday and he is in heaven right now. He's smiling. He's happy. He's full of joy. He's with his wife right now. I mean, just think about it. When we as Christians take our last breath, we're in heaven. We're in glory. Isn't it awesome to be in glory? I mean, look what we have to look forward to. I can't wait to get to heaven. I know I still have a work to do here on this earth, so I don't want to go too soon. But when I do take my last breath, praise God, I'm in heaven. I'm with Jesus for all of eternity. And I am going to give you that opportunity right now to accept Jesus as your personal Savior. You know, you could say, well, I, I read the Bible once in a while, but reading the Bible doesn't make you a Christian. Going to church doesn't make you any more a Christian than going to McDonald's makes you a hamburger. <laughs> Believing in God doesn't make you a Christian because I believe uh, that there's a bank down the road, but I can't just go to that bank and get a million dollars out. Believing that God exists doesn't make you a Christian. It's only by making sacred vows to the Lord. You're not married until you make vows to each other in front of that preacher or that judge, and they pronounce you husband and wife. And you're not a Christian until you make a sacred vow to the Lord, and you say, Lord, I want you to be my friend. I repent of my sins. I want to be born again. And then you're a Christian. So if you want Jesus into your heart as your Lord and your Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Father God, Forgive me of my sins. I have sinned. I've disappointed you in the past, and I ask you that you would forgive me. I turn my back on sin, and I thank you that you will forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I invite you into my heart as Lord and Savior. I embrace you as the Son of God. I want you to... I desire you come into my heart, be my Lord, be my Savior, in Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, you become born again. You are now a child of God. Let me encourage you to find a local church to go 
and to, and to learn more about the Lord because the Lord desperately wants you to learn more about him. If you need more help, you can go to our website at findrefuge.tv and you can email us from there. We'd love to point you in the right direction. I thank you for joining me on this broadcast today. I want you to say over and over and over and over that he is a faithful God, that he is a faithful God, that he is my faithful God. He is my faithful God. He will never leave me or forsake me. He's right there. He's holding my hands through it all. Maybe you feel heartbroken today. He's holding your hands. He's hold he held my hands. He's holding your hands. Would you share this broadcast? Would you let other people know about it? Perhaps you could even share it on social media. If you have a Facebook, you could share this broadcast. I appreciate that so very much. God bless you. Until next time, we love you so much. You take care. Bye-bye.